Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, uh, this is a big day today um, in the life of this congregation, in the life of a lot of people, especially the young people today, because the young people we have with us today in what we call our confirmation class, they are going to be standing up in just a few moments, and they're going to give their testimony together. They're going to reaffirm the Christian faith into which they were baptized and they're going to say, it's now mine. I own it. This is my faith. These young people began this journey a while ago, most of them with great fear. Am I right? <laughs> with great fear and some with tears, but there's no tears today, at least not tears of sadness or stress, but tears of joy and excitement. These young people are getting confirmed. Now, a lot of people don't know exactly what that means, and even if you do, I think it's important that we review that. What is the rite of confirmation in the Lutheran Church? So here's what it is. Write this down if you need to. Here's the answer. It depends. That's the answer. <laughs> it depends who you ask. I mean, if you ask parents, most parents are going to say, well, you know what? Confirmation is uh, getting my kid confirmed is my duty. It's my obligation because my granddaddy was a Lutheran and uh, my father was a Lutheran and I'm a Lutheran and dad, you're going to be one too. So there you go. Some parents might say that. Not all, but some. And then, of course, you're going to ask students. And students will say, at least at the beginning of confirmation, it's just one big stress. Raise your hand if that's you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. Because there's so much memory work, and I can't memorize anything. Oh, man, there's no way. I can't memorize. You can ask anybody. I mean, I mean I, yes, I know all the stats of every Longhorn player, absolutely. I know who's won every World Series, and I can give you those stats, too. And oh, I know all the emails and, and all the phone numbers of all my best friends. I know them by heart because I've memorized them. And I know all the tricks and the secrets of all my video games, but I can't memorize. <laughs> That's what we hear. Some might say that. Not all of them, but some. Now, if you ask any of the teachers of confirmation, I know what they will say. They'll say, yeah, you're right about all those things. We know confirmation is a duty. It, 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 there is, we believe, in some sense, an obligation to teach your children or have them taught if you're not going to do it yourself. We also know it's about sacrifice. It's about memory work. It's about stress, there's no doubt. But you know what? It's also about having fun, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's about going off once a year and all, get away from the family. Some of your moms were terrified, but getting away from your family for a few days, playing some games, going to, Lone, to, to Camp Lone Star, right, and playing some games. Some of those games you know and you love, right? And some of them, they just completely confuse you. Just completely confuse you. <laughs> that right, Sammy, yeah. And then it's a time for also these kids, get, you know, the kids, they get to show off their talent, all right? Like Ashton, you've got to see him do the worm. It's just incredible. And then you've got Autumn, who, I don't know, she's just crazy strong. I don't think I've ever been able to do that, and right now it just hurts looking at it. But we not only get to know their talent, we give them a chance to get stupid, too. We do. We, we, we do what we call stupid human tricks. That, Andrea does not, she's not missing a finger, it just looks like it. I don't know where it went. I don't, I don't know how that works, but she can bend her thumbs and her fingers in any which way. And, uh, and then we got Amy here. I didn't know arms bent that direction. But you know what? You can be behind her and watch her. Oh, look at that. that that's just painful, Sammy. I, I, I don't know how you do that. But you know what? It, it's more than that, too. Spending the time at that, at that retreat with these, with these students it's about building trust. In fact, one of the activities that we do are what are called the trust fall. We took a brief video. We want to show you that video today. This is what a trust fall is. All right. Whenever you're ready. Spotters ready? Spotters ready. My name is Autumn, and I'm ready to fall. Fall, fall away. Okay, put the down. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I, <laughs> how, how many of you have ever done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't try it at home. Um, but um, confirmation has a lot to do with trust, with building trust and teaching these kids to trust each other. That's what that's all about. It's also getting you to, to trust us 
as teachers, getting your parents to trust the process, but most importantly, it's about getting y'all to trust that you have a Savior, that Jesus did it all, that He forgives you and He gives you the gift of eternal life. That's what it's all about. But confirmation, to get to that point of building that trust, it takes priorities, doesn't it? When you don't get your work done, it's not because I had this to do or that to do, it's because I didn't make it my priority. See, we know that. It's about priorities, getting the kids to prioritize it, but also getting parents to, tr- to prioritize spiritual stuff over temporal stuff, right? The crown of gold in heaven, rather than all the riches that just go to dust on earth. It's about priorities. But ultimately, when you put it all together, what the confirmation process is really all about is about equipping our young people for life equipping them to deal with what life is going to throw at them because it throws a lot at you. How to deal with pain and suffering and loss, poverty, riches, stress, false teachings, wars, terrorism, transgenderism, broken homes, broken hearts, and even death, because that's part of life. Those are the realities they're going to face, right? Those are the realities we all face at some time in our life. So it's about strengthening their hold, their grip on their faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior, knowing that no matter what they experience in this life, God's got them right here, and He's not going to let you go. That's His promise. It's really about getting them to listen to the voice of Jesus in here. Because this is where he talks to us, through his word. So I want to share just real briefly how we go about doing that. There's three things. The first thing we do is give them head knowledge. So they know who Jesus is. Now some people say, well, but it's, it's not all about head knowledge. Well, I know that. But you've got to start somewhere. And besides, it's biblical. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 4, He says, the goal of the the body of Christ is to reach a unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of the Son of God. We are to grow in knowing who God is. And Solomon writes in Proverbs, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. How many of you know that to be true? Because maybe you've been there, maybe you've walked away and come back. Or had a child who has walked away, or maybe right now you're praying, oh God, I hope and pray my child comes back. But that's quite a gift that Solomon tells us about. That's head knowledge, and it's something we all need. You know what the number one reason that is given for adults not attending Bible studies in a church? Embarrassed, you're not going to know how to use the book. You're not going to be able to find chapter, verse in the Bible. And I have no doubt some of you have had discussions with others about baptism and Holy Communion, and you didn't know how to defend what we believe here, infant baptism. Got to listen, Jesus says. And some of you, I know you've experienced that knock on the door where people come to and they say, you know what, hey, you know, we're Christians. Yeah, but we don't believe in the Trinity. And neither should you because it's not in the Bible. And you don't even know what to say you got to listen. Listen to what Jesus says in here. And how many times have we all stumbled over the question, but if God is so loving, why do so many bad things happen in this world? And every time I stand up here and preach, you know what goes through my mind? I sit there and I ask myself, I wonder how many here today can say with all the certainty in the world that you No, you are saved. It's not about being good enough. It's not about being lucky. You know that you are going to spend eternity with God in heaven, and you can actually tell them why. These kids can. Every single one of them can do that. And I know some say we're too tough on them. Some say we're too demanding. That's not what our church taught. Our church didn't have memory work. We didn't do that. How come you got to have it here? 
And you know what? I guess it just depends. <laughs> I just think this is big. This is important eternally. To share what I mean, I, I have asked a few of our students to come forward. Would you please uh, come on up here? I know you're scared. Get up here anyway. Come on. <laughs> come on up. All right. Here's what I like to do is I like to share just a few of the questions. They have an exam of over 50 questions on it that they have to answer. There's not, there is not a uh, 100%, 90%, 80%. There's not A, B, C, D. You either get 100% and pass or you fail. 99.9% doesn't cut it, does it? Is that on? Let me see that. Yes, it is. All right. So this is Emily. Emily, you're first. Go ahead. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, define the term inspired as it relates to the Bible. The term inspired as it relates to the Bible means that God wrote the Bible through man. The Bible is the inspired word of God. So God wrote it or authored it and through man and had them write it. That's a hard concept to get, but, but we also say the Bible is the inerrant word of God. What does that mean as it relates to the Bible? The term inerrant as it relates to the Bible means the Bible is without error. Because God wrote it and God is perfect. All right, well, that's a great opinion. And somebody can say, well, that's what you think, but I don't think that. So we have to back this up by Scripture and what it says. Can you give us a couple passages to support what you just said? One Bible passage that supports the Bible as being God's Word is 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Another verse that supports the Bible as being God's Word is 2 Peter 1.21. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Not bad. <laughs> good job. All right. Give it to Autumn. Autumn. Autumn, a lot of people call themselves, I'm a New Testament Christian, not an Old Testament Christian or whatever, you know. Well, can you please explain to us how does the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament, point to Jesus Christ? The Old Testament points to the promise of Jesus to come, and the New Testament points to the promise fulfilled in Jesus. Absolutely. Both of them talk about Jesus. The one is talking about him coming, the other one says he's come, and that's who he is. Now, what Luther did was he did not add anything to the Bible, but he summarized the Bible into six parts, six chief parts, to make it easier for us to teach families and to teach our kids. Can you identify what those six chief parts of Christian doctrine are as outlined in our catechism? Those six chief parts are the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, Confession, the Sacrament of Holy Baptism, and the Sacrament of Holy Communion. All right, very good. Thank you, Autumn. Let's give it over here to Jake now. Jake, Jake hasn't had a chance really to practice. He had one service, but, but Jake, would you please explain the Holy Trinity? And I, I know we can't really totally understand it, but we use an illustration in class so that we can teach others. Would you please use an illustration and explain it? So, for the Holy Trinity, you use a triangle. At the top is the Father, at the bottom right is the Son, and at the bottom left is the Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father, but they are all God. They're all God. So, we got three yeah. gods, three gods. No. Right. We we got, got, well, what is it now? Yes or no? We got no. <laughs> 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 One God and three Person. Oh, praise God you got that right. All right. Well, now, we, we, we use another illustration, too, using water. Tell us how that works. Okay, so you have a, a triangle, and at the top is solid, and at the bottom right is liquid, and at the bottom left is gas. Solid is not liquid. Liquid is not gas. Gas is not solid. But they're all water. They're all water. So, so it, it helps us to kind of understand talking about three forms, though that's not actually how it works, but we don't understand it, but it's a way to help explain it. And one of the things that we're trying to do in this class is, is, is get our students not only to know it for themselves, but be able to teach it to their friends. All right? Let's move on to Ashton over here. Ashton, Ashton, why is, uh, why is going to church so important, Ashton? It's important to go to church so that we can uh, build a better relationship with Jesus Christ, and so that we can build a better relationship with the uh, followers in Jesus Christ. Right, because we need each other, right? 
You can't go it alone as a Christian. That's what, that's what church is all about. People say all the time, I don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, yeah, you're right, you don't. But why wouldn't you want to? There's a lot of good getting connected to a body of Christ. Now, is there a Bible passage that supports the, the importance of going to church? Yes, there is a Bible passage that supports that, and that's Hebrews 10.25. Let us not give it meeting as some are in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. Very good. Thank you very much, Ashton. Give it back to Jake now, would you? All right. We're going we're gonna to hold off on the applause now and get through this. Otherwise, I'm going to get the clock called on me here. So, okay, Jake, how long did it take God to create the world? It took God six days to create the world. Not seven. No. What did he do on the seventh day? He rested. Because he was tired. He must have been tired, right? No. No, okay. <laughs> He's God. I, here's the crazy thing. You know, people go, well, he could have done it in just six days. Well, he's God. He could have done it like that. So the real question should be, why did he take so long? Why did he take the time he did, Jake? Uh, God took the time he did to create the world to set a pattern. And what's that pattern? A week. A week. And six days on and? Six, one day off. And one day off. What are we supposed to do with that one day? Uh, rest. Rest in him, right? Yeah. And that's what this is all about. Take some time out of each week to spend with the Lord. Uh, Emily, right here. I want you to list two reasons why we baptize infants in our church and why we believe infants are supposed to be baptized and also supply a supporting passage for each. One reason to why infants should be baptized is they are included in the words all nations. A Bible passage that supports this is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. All right, and what's another one? Another reason to why infants should be baptized is they need what baptism offers because babies are sinners. A Bible verse that supports that is Psalm 51.5. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. That's such a powerful verse. And, and how, I, I mean, look, is there anybody here who doesn't know that little babies are sinful? Come on, really? Really? Okay. Um, anyway, we're born. It's what we call original sin. Original sin, we all have it. I want to give the mic back to Jake over there. I missed this one for you, Jake. What makes our understanding, our Lutheran understanding of God's grace unique? Even faith is a gift. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's the prime mover. I mean, we're dead in our sins. We need the Holy Spirit, right? So what verse supports that understanding? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace we have been saved, through faith. This is not of your own. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Excellent. Thank you. And Autumn, we'll want to move to the Lord's Prayer, our, our fifth part here. Why do we pray to God? We pray to God because he commands and invites all believers in Christ to pray to him. Absolutely. And, um, you know, Luther calls prayer an exercise of faith. And you're going to hear about that in a little bit. All right. But why do we pray that the will of God be done? Well, we know that the will of God will always be done, but we want his good and gracious will to be done in our lives. Really? Yes. Do, do you always want God's will done in your life? Uh, no, but okay. we should. <laughs> Fair enough. That's honest. That's honest. I like that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go back to Ashton over here. Um, Ashton, name the two parts of confession. The two parts of confession are that we confess our sins, and the second part of confession is that we receive absolution, which is forgiveness from all our sins. And what sins should we confess before God? The sins we have committed and the sins we are not aware of. Right, all sins, right? And what sins should we confess before people? The sins we should confess before people are the sins we have committed against them. Yeah, that is so important to be honest with people when we've harmed them, when we've hurt them, when we've sinned against them. There's a special authority that is given to the church, and it's called the Office of the Keys. Can you please recite that for us? What is that? <laughs> the Office of the Keys is a special authority Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant sinners as long as they do not repent. Well, thank you for getting through that with fall, well, falling on the floor <laughs> laughing. Okay, um, <laughs> let's go back to Emily over here. Can you please compare and contrast the beliefs of, you know, the three ma mainstream religions, uh, Lutherans, um, Roman Catholic, and the Reformed Church? So Roman Catholics believe in transubstantiation, which means the bread and wine turn into the body and blood of Jesus. Okay. The Reformed Church believes in representation, which means the bread and wine represent the body and blood of Jesus. 
Lutherans believe in the real presence, presence, which means the body and blood are in, with, and under the bread and wine in some mysterious way. So we don't just receive two, we receive all four, the body and blood through the bread and wine. I mean, that's how it works, right? Okay, now you already heard me uh, give the short form for self-examination. Can you repeat that for us? Mm -hmm. If you you have a friend that comes to church, what four questions should they be asking? What should we all be asking ourselves before we receive communion? Um, The questions you should ask yourself is, am I a sinner? Do I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior? Do I believe that the true body and blood of Jesus Christ are really present in the bread and wine and that I receive the assurance of forgiveness? And do I want to change and be more like Jesus? Amen to that. Thank you. And now let's go to Autumn here. Autumn, why does the resurrection of Jesus from the grave give you comfort and peace? The resurrection of Jesus gives me comfort and peace because it proves that he is the Son of God and because he rose, I will rise too. Absolutely. It proves he's the Son of God. He can do whatever he said he was going to do, right? So... If you were to stand before the gates of heaven and God were to say to you, why should I let you into my kingdom? What are you going to say? You're going to say, I've been good enough or I'm better than others, better than my sister. What are you going to say? If I were to stand before the gates of heaven, I would say that I should be let in because I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Because that's the requirement, isn't it? That's it. That's the faith in Jesus. And even that is a gift. Let's give it to Ashton here to close this out. Ashton's pretty good at the books of the Bible, and like I said before, biggest fear of adults is getting embarrassed because they don't know how to use the Bible. Well, that's what we teach them in this. Can you give us the New Testament books, please? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, First John, Second John, Third John, Jude, Revelation. All right, very good. Revelation without an S. Now do the Old Testament. <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Kings, First and Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Joshua, Joshua, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nehemiah, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. <laughs> he thinks that's funny. See. He, he, th- he thinks that's funny because every year at least one of the students thinks they're faster than I am. <laughs> All right, we're going to see. We're going to start. Why are you backing up? All right. All right, let's start slow <clears throat> and then we'll move along and, and, and see who can reach the end first. All right, ready? Oh, <clears throat> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Numbers, You guys can go back to your seats now, but Autumn, I want you to come over here. Come over here. All right, all right. See, it's not all work. We have some fun too, but um, you know. You guys might be good, but you're not done, all right? I just, I just want you to know that. Um, uh, you're just beginning because as, as Christians, what we need to do is not only have it in our head, but the next step is for us to move it to our hearts. Because when it's moved to our hearts, our hope is that it connects to Jesus Christ. Our greatest hope for all of our students when they go through this process is that God becomes real to them that you know who he is and that he loves you. And then no matter what, he forgives you. And, and what I want to do here is um, I want to give this to, to Autumn because what happened here when she did her exam, she was the first one done and, well, close, close second, I think, to Emily, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, and Stephen Headley and I were doing the examination and Stephen asked this question, well, what do you, what's the one thing you take away from confirmation? And she said something so profound and I just asked her if she would share that. She didn't find out till this morning that I was going to ask her to do this, so but go ahead. So the one thing that I will take away from confirmation is the power of prayer. Because before I came to this church, um, they didn't really teach us that it, was, that it was important to have a good relationship with God in prayer. So I didn't pray to him as much as I should have. And I felt like my faith was weakening, and I was questioning God a lot in my faith. But then when I came to this church and I started confirmation, um, it was like a whole new world opened up because I hadn't learned any of these things. And one thing that really stuck out to me was prayer. 
And Miss Leona taught me that if you have a good and strong relationship with God in prayer, then you'll have a stronger faith and trust in him. And so as soon as I started praying more, I really felt that happening in my life. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. God bless you. Yeah. All right, this is called confirmation, not graduation, all right? Um, this is for you guys. There's a life application now. We have the head connection, we have the heart connection, and now life application. This isn't where you stop learning about God's love for you. This is where it begins on your journey as a Christian. You now know who God is. Keep learning about him. Keep worshiping him, and keep living your life for him and trusting that the faith God has given you works. Works for your salvation and yours. But also trust that your works in this life, God can and will use them for the salvation of others. Look, as proud as I am of these kids, I don't bring them up here just to show them off, though that's probably a part of it. But it's that we learn something. And that's something I hope that we all learn today, because I do every time, is how important it is for all of us to continue to grow, to grow in our spirituality, to grow in our understanding of who God is, spiritual growth, because we need to be equipped with the realities of life, and that life is not getting easier. It's getting more and more difficult. Listen to the voice of Jesus, because there are voices out there that are trying to pull you away from the voice of Jesus that are trying to teach you things that are not true, that are trying to lose your faith in who is the only Savior of the world. It's the voice of Jesus these kids have learned this year to listen to. And the reason we're so passionate about that, here's why. John 10, my sheep listen to my voice. I love them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no one can snatch them out of my hand. No one. Confirmation class of 2016. Thanks for listening. And God bless you. Now let's get you confirmed. You ready? All right. I don't know if I am. But I'll be right there. All right. Confirmation class, will you please stand? Do you this day, in the presence of God and these brothers and sisters in Christ, acknowledge that God claimed you to be his own when you were baptized? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you believe that God deeply loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you? If so, answer, yes. yes. Do you believe that only through what Jesus has done for you, that you are made acceptable to God and reconciled to him? If so, answer, Yes, I believe Jesus is my Savior. Yes, I believe Jesus is my Savior. Do you believe in one God who's three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe in the triune God. Yes, I believe in the triune God. Do you hold the scriptures, the Bible, to be the inspired and inerrant word of God and the teachings as you have studied them from the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to have your life shaped and guided by God's word, conforming your desires and will to his? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Do you intend to be faithful in learning and studying God's word and worshiping God and living your life for Jesus? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Let us all stand together. And let's confess our faith in these words that Christians have been confessing down through the ages, the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. This last question is for all y'all. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession, faithful to your Lord Jesus Christ, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from him? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. God bless you in this. Please be seated. Benjamin Gerald Audley, your verses, Colossians 2, verses 6 through 7. So then just as you received Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, that's your verse. You hold on to that. All right, Sammy. <laughs> Samantha, Adele, Ann Beck. Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah 317. All right, Lauren. Lauren Elizabeth Bristol. Psalm 1914. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 1914. You got that down? It's a good one. Amy. Amy. Alyssa. Delagula. How'd I do? All right. Psalm 28, 7, Amy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. Psalm 28, 7. I'd like all the family members of these four to please come forward now. Come on up. All those who'd like to come up and lay your hands on them. Let them know how much you love them. If you can't actually touch them, lay your hand on them. Lay your hand on somebody who's laying their hand on them. This is a blessing for these students that we're all a part of and helping them to, to keep their faith strong, all right? So together, let's say the blessing that will appear on the screen. Together, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ give you His Holy Spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and love of God. Amen. That's good. Family, you may be seated. Benjamin, congratulations, and God bless you. Sammy, congratulations, God bless you. Lauren, congratulations, and God bless you. Amy, congratulations, and God bless you. family members get up and just go to the side so you can come up as soon as we're ready to all the family members of these four who are up here all right Andrea Andrea Cheyenne Ebrahimi your verse is Psalm 143 verse 8 let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love for I have put my trust in you show me the way I should go for to you I lift up my soul Psalm 143 verse 8 I thought it was just Nico. Nicholas River James Garcia Jones. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. It's a good one for you. David Daniel Grow the Fifth. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope 
and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. And he does. Ashton Charles Hottie. John 15, 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. John 15, 5. It's kind of a favorite of mine, by the way. Parents and family, come on up. bless these four students together God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ give you his Holy Spirit of wisdom and knowledge of grace and prayer of power and strength of sanctification and love of God God bless you guys God bless you you may be seated now and not not the confirmant so maybe go stay there come here Andrea congratulations God bless you you congratulations Nico same thing. Will the family members please get up and be prepared to come on up here? We have five here up there this time. All right. All right, Hunter. Hunter Garrett Cossey. It's John 10, 27, 28. You just heard that verse, didn't you? My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one can snatch them out of my hand. John 10, 27 to 28. Emily Kathleen Mishke, Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, 11. Austin Lewis Mutcher, Hebrews 12. Verses 1 through 2a. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2a. Learn that one. Autumn Christine Wilson, Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31. All right. I had to write it down, so I got it right. Jake Austin Zimmerman. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. You trust Him in that, all right? All right. Come on forward. God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
give you his Holy Spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and love of God. Oh, God bless you all. There's a lot in those words, a lot in those words. Family, please be seated. Hunter, congratulations there. Emily, congratulations. God bless you. Austin, congratulations there, guy. Autumn, congratulations. God bless you. Jake, congratulations. God bless you. Based upon your profession and promise that you just made, I pronounce you to be confirmed members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, specifically Good Shepherd, right here in Cedar Park. God bless you. And again, thanks for listening. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for who you are, for your great goodness in bringing these, your, your children, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior, enabling them with their hearts to believe and with their mouths to confess his saving name. Grant that they may continue steadfast and strong in this faith, living their lives in such a way that people are going to want to know who their God is. Keep them strong and trusting that the faith they have gives them certainty of their salvation and that God, you will use them for the salvation of others. We pray that you keep them fighting the good fight no matter what they face in this life and receive that crown of righteousness for all eternity. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. That's us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to conclude this service with a song that's um, it's beautiful. Andre Pacelli um, saying that he's coming to town, I guess, but after hearing this, you're not going to go need to see him. It's called The Prayer. Chris, melody, please.
Thank you very much. That was just beautiful. It really was. And that was for you guys. All right? Prayer that God would keep you safe by keeping you in the faith. But that's my prayer for all of us. Because the faith that we are gifted by the Holy Spirit does work for your salvation. And the faith that we produce in our lives, God's going to use all the works that we do to help others come to know Jesus and work for their salvation too. So as you leave from here today, I want you to think about that as families. When you're together with these kids, with your families, wherever you are, at work, standing line at HEB, people is putting, God is putting people in your lives for the purpose of you to touch them with his love. Think on that. And as you go about practicing that, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you the peace that only he can give in Jesus because you know faith works. God bless you.